Today's gospel, we are given an analogy of the different people who follow Christ. We have those who are hired very early and work in the vineyard, work for the master throughout the entire day. We have others who come a few hours later, we have others who come even later, and then we have those who come towards the very end of the workday, in the last hour, finally come to work for their master. In the end, they all receive the same reward, the same wage. And this analogy, as I said, applies to Christians. Those who, from the very beginning of their life, throughout the entire day of their life, have followed Christ, have kept his commandments, have labored for him, have worked for them, have fulfilled their obligations and duties as followers of Christ. Those who come a few hours later are those who, maybe for a few years or maybe for many years, didn't really care about God, didn't give him any service, didn't give him any attention, just did their own thing, were idle, wasting their time. And when then when they follow, finally do come and labor for Christ, they receive that re same reward. Even those who come very, very late still receive the same reward as those who came early. Now, of course, this is by way of analogy, so it's not a perfect analogy, of course. We know that those who, by a good life, accumulate higher merit, gain a greater reward in heaven than those who do not do as much. But still, no matter when we come to follow Christ, no matter how long, if we serve him, if we keep his commandments, if we die in the state of sanctifying grace, we will be rewarded with heaven. There is that common wage, so to speak, for all. And this is an encouraging thought, especially for souls perhaps who have for many years or for a long period of time maybe not served God as well as they could. Those who have put off their obligations, those who convert at a late time in life, they all can receive that same reward of heaven. And this is possible through penance through atonement for sin. And this is why we start off with this gospel today on Septuagesima Sunday. Septuagesima is that period of preparation for Lent, Lent being the preparation for Easter, the penitential season of Lent. And the reason why we have these two and a half weeks of preparation is because Lent is a very special time of grace, more so than any other time of the year. And we can go through Lent for those who are bound to fast. We can go through it with the kind of the mindset of, well, I just have to do the bare minimum. I have to get through this so I don't commit any mortal sins and put my soul in jeopardy. Or we can go through Lent with the mentality that we're going to give as much, give our very best effort to try to get as much as we can from that penitential season, from that focus on atoning for our sins, on growing in self-knowledge, and of, of trying to make up for the things that are lacking. And if we don't go into Lent with the proper sentiments, a proper mentality, then we waste time. We're like those laborers who are waiting around for a couple hours when they could have been doing something, could have been accomplishing something. They put it off, and they put it off, and they put it off. And that happens very easily for Lent. Ash Wednesday comes in the middle of the week, and we're like, oh, Lent's here. And the first Sunday of Lent, you always hear that stirring sermon, or a lot of places you hear that stirring sermon about the need to do penance. And and, and then you say, okay, i got to do something. And a week later, you hear the next sermon, and it's about the passion of Christ. You're like, oh, man, I really got to do something. And then the next week, it comes and goes, and then you're in the middle of Lent, and you realize, boy, this is, time is really flying. I should really get down to doing something. 
hopefully by the time Holy, Holy Week comes along, that last hour, start doing something. But it's so easy to put it off. So easy. And that's why it's important for us now, during the Septuagesima season, to start thinking, to start pondering what is Lent about? What is the period of Septuagesima about? What do I need to change? What things need to be filled up? Penance is so important. As St. Paul said, I chastise my body and bring it into subjection. Lest in preaching to others, I myself become a castaway. St. Paul was a very holy man. Spent his entire life, all of his focus was on bringing souls to Christ. His missionary labors, traveling all over the place, all of the labors and work that he went through, he was so holy. Yet he felt the need to do penance. Not because he was doing committing terrible sins, but because he wanted to prevent that from happening. And so penance is something for all of us. Whether we be a great saint or a great sinner, penance is necessary. That is why the church makes it mandatory in the 40-day period every year. So, if we need encouragement of motives, why to do penance, I would encourage you to read through the Old Testament parts there. That's why in the, the, the breviary for this week, the prayers that the priests are bound to pray, the readings from the Old Testament during this week, they go back to Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, talking about the creation of Adam and Eve and of all of the world. And then talk about the fall of Adam and Eve. And then the, the sad state, the, all, the sad things that happen afterwards. How Adam and Eve were in this paradise. Perfectly happy, everything they needed, everything they wanted, and they blew it, they lost it. And we read through Genesis and throughout the Old Testament how low mankind has fallen from that initial state in which we were created. That, when we read through those stories, reminds us if it could happen to Adam and Eve, it could happen to me. I could fall. I could lose grace. I could lose that friendship with God that I have now. If we read through the Old Testament, we can see all those many stories of men, people that had done terrible things and were punished by God very terribly. That's a scary thing. If we are attached to sin, if we are slaves to sin, if there's anything that we can't overcome, that means we are slaves to that. We are being controlled by that vice, that bad habit, that sin. We are not free. We are under the dominion of that sin. And only grace can break those chains of sin. Only grace. Only God's supernatural help. That is why we do penance. To bring down our fallen human nature. To break those chains. And to open up open ourselves up to God's grace so that we might be become holy, become saints. Penance is necessary for everyone. As our Lord said, unless you do penance, you shall likewise perish. It's necessary for everyone. As I said, saint or sinner. And it's important that we go about it in the right, with the right attitude. There are two elements to penance that must be there for it to be fruitful. Fear and hope. We have to fear God's punishment. We need to. We should. We should fear that, as St. Paul said, in preaching to others and telling other people, this is the right way and you should do that. Preaching to others, we should become cast away and having the truth and having the, the true faith that we should lose it. That's a scary thing. We should fear that. That should motivate us to do penance. But that other element of hope, fear should not be sterile. It shouldn't be the fear that terrorizes or paralyzes, but motivates. 
And we can't have any motivation if we don't have any hope that this will help me, that this will please God, that if I do this penance, things will be better, that I will be able to break those bad habits, that God will give me more grace, that he will help me out more and more. I have that hope, that confidence in God's goodness and his mercy and his, his love for each and every one of us. So we need to have those two elements there. We can get through Lent just sliding by doing the bare minimum. Or we can make it a very fruitful time. There's no other time of the year that you will be given as much light and as much grace as the season of Lent. And we have to start preparing for it now if we want to have that good Lent. So especially during this time, growing in our understanding of our need for penance, going about it in the right way, thinking about what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, especially praying for self-knowledge, knowledge of self. Because if we don't understand ourselves, if we don't know ourselves, and look at ourselves in relation to God, what is there to change? If we're just okay, we're good enough, and we're not looking at the difference between us and God, the things that we should be aspiring to, why do penance? Why try? We're good enough? If that's the case, then, well, you don't need to come to church anymore. You don't need to do any penance. You don't need to keep the commandments. You don't need to do anything. We need to have a good understanding of ourselves and of God. And with that knowledge comes that fruit of wanting to change, of wanting to better ourselves, become more holy. So let us during the Septuagesima season focus. Try to, try to draw ourselves away from the world a little bit more. Try to focus on what we need to do, what we need to change, and how we're going to do it. So that this season of Lent will help us to grow in holiness. It can be the means, the penance that we, penances that we perform can be the means of our sanctification and final perseverance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.